In this episode, we're going to look at how easy it is to containerize a .NET 6 web API. Hey everyone, Wes here with Productive Dev. I hope you're doing well. In this episode, we're gonna pick up where we left off in episode one, when we created a new .NET 6 web API from scratch using test-driven development. And we're going to take this project a step further by containerizing it using Docker. So we're gonna look step-by-step -step at creating a new Docker file. I'll show you everything that you need to know to containerize your application and what each line of the Docker file that we'll write means. Then we'll build our image and we'll look at tagging our image and then we'll run it from our development machine. So containerizing our .NET 6 web API is gonna make it much easier to orchestrate various web API workloads when we talk about deploying this API to the cloud. So if you'd like to see how we built this .NET 6 web API from scratch, be sure to check out episode one. Otherwise, if you'd like access to the source code, you can support the channel. All patrons of the channel via Patreon get full access to all of the source code that's developed in every Productive Dev episode. So with that, let's get started containerizing our application. Okay, so the application that we're going to be containerizing in this episode is a simple .NET Web API built in .NET 6 that we built in episode one. So the main idea behind this particular project is that we have an API with a single endpoint here where we make a GET request to essentially return us a list of users. And so this comes back to our clients as JSON. And the way it kind of works here is that we reach into the service layer which has an HTTP client on it. And this client is used to make a request out to a third party service with a configurable endpoint. So we make a get request out to that service, which returns to us a list of users that we serialize into our own class. So we have a user object here or user class. And we serialize a list of these objects from the JSON that we get back. And effectively we just proxy that back to our own client so the controller gets this list of users, and if any are found, we return a 200 OK response with that JSON list of users. Otherwise, we return a 404. So if you'd like to build this application from scratch before you get started, be sure to check out episode one, Productive Dev episode one. And we built this using TDD, so you'll also see how we built out all the unit tests for this simple project. Otherwise, if you just like access to the source code, then as a patron of the channel, you can get access to the source code for this project and anything that we build on this channel. So your support would be much appreciated. If you're interested in becoming a patron, there's a link in the description for that. Okay, so to containerize this application, what we need to do is to create a Docker file. And so I'm gonna to go to the folder view here in Visual Studio, and we're gonna create a Docker file in the root of our project. So I'm gonna right click and we're gonna add a new file called Docker file. So we're gonna use a multi-stage build here, meaning that we're going to have a build stage in our case. And we're gonna have what we'll call a serve stage. So this is gonna keep our build pretty efficient. We're gonna to try to keep the container or the image as small as possible. And so we're going to have uh, an initial base image that uses the .NET SDK to build our binaries. And then we will use a base image with the .NET runtime, which would be much lighter weight to just serve up those built artifacts. So for a base image here, we're gonna use a Microsoft base image. So this is the .NET SDK version six, Focal, and Focal is just Ubuntu 20.04. 20, and we're gonna call this the build stage. Next, we need to create a working directory here, so we can do that with the work dir directive, and we're gonna set that to be forward slash source. Next, we're gonna copy everything from our current project directory into that working directory with the command copy dot dot, so copy everything from this directory into our current working directory. And now we need to run two .NET commands. Basically, we need a command to restore all of our project dependencies, so we can run .NET restore, and we'll point this to the relative path cloudcustomers.api forward slash cloudcustomers.api.csproj. And we're gonna use the disable parallel flag here. 
Finally, for this stage, we, we need to actually publish our artifacts to an output directory. And so the way that we do that is with the .NET publish command, again, pointing to the relative path of our csproj file. We're setting the configuration to release and we're setting the output directory to be this forward slash app, which will get created. And we'll use the no restore flag here. So all of the binaries or the artifacts for this will end up in an app directory. So that's really all the work we need to do with the SDK. So what we're gonna do for the serve stage is to use the .NET runtime. And we can again use a Microsoft base image here, ASP.NET 6 focal. So this is the .NET 6 runtime running on Ubuntu 20.04. We're gonna create a new working directory for this part of the build called app. And now we just need to copy all of the artifacts that landed in the output directory from the build stage into our current working directory. And so we can do that with the command copy and we can use this flag from build. And so this is referring to what we named any particular stage in our Docker file. And so we're copying from the build stage from this app directory, everything into our current working directory, which is forward slash app for this stage. Next, we're gonna expose port 5000 by default that's where we'll handle requests. And now we're gonna set an entry point for the application, which will be this command.net and then cloudcustomers.api.dll, which is the core artifact that we're concerned with. This will be the built file, the binary that basically just runs our .NET API. So in the container, when .NET cloudcustomers.api.dll is run, our application will start up. Okay, so that's really all we need to do in terms of a Docker file for this particular project. Let's go ahead and see how we can actually build this file now. Okay, so I've got Windows Terminal open here. We're in our project directory, and as usual, I'm using git bash as a terminal emulator here. We need to run a Docker build command to actually read that Docker file that we just created and build it. So we can do that using the command docker build. We're gonna use the flag dash rm to remove intermediate images. And we're gonna tag our image. In my case, I'm gonna call it productive dev. And we're gonna call the app cloud customers latest. And then we need to say we're building in this directory. This is the directory that contains our Docker file. So this will take some time. If you don't have the base images, what's gonna happen is Docker is going to go out and download those base images, the Microsoft.NET SDK and the runtime, and it's going to go step-by-step step through our Docker file to actually create an image for us. First of all, you can check that you have it. So what I'll do is I'll run the command docker image ls, and we'll pipe that to grep and look for the string cloud customers. You can look for the, you know any substring that is part of you know the tag, the name of the image that you just tagged. You can see that just a few seconds ago, we created this image and it's currently about 213 megs in size. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and run our container now. For this, we're gonna use the docker run command and we're going to basically map ports 5000 from our host into 5000 on the container and we're gonna do the same thing for ports 5001. You could map to any open port that you prefer here. We're gonna set a couple of environment variables and one way we can do that when we wanna set environment variables at runtime like this is with dash E. And I'm gonna set ASP.NET Core HTTP port to HTTPS forward slash forward slash plus colon 5001. So the base image that we're using is actually setting this by default to port 443 and port 80, I believe. So we're going to control this by overriding it and setting the ASP Net Core HTTP port to this HTTPS 5001. And we're going to set a second variable here, ASP Net Core URLs, to HTTP forward slash forward slash plus colon 5000. And we're going to run our image. So that will be productive dev forward slash cloud customers. Okay, so you can see that this is logs that we're getting out here. They're not pretty, but we can see them. They're kind of in JSON format here. 
and we can see that it's listening on port 5000. So let's open up our browser and look at port 5000. Okay, so when we visit localhost 5000 forward slash users, we get our data out to the screen here. And in fact, if we put the browser open with the terminal, we can actually see when we make requests here to this endpoint, we're getting logs out from our Docker container. So things seem to be working nicely. Now I'd like to add a feature here for a health check, mainly because it's really useful to have health checks when you're containerizing applications as an endpoint that you can you know, automate requests to, to ensure that a particular service is running as expected. It's also super easy to set up a bare bones health check in a .NET API. So let's look at how to do that now. I'm gonna stop the container and we're gonna head back into Visual Studio. Okay, what we'll do now is we'll head into our API project and we're gonna open up program.cs. Here, as we talked about in episode one with .NET 6, we have a new convention we can utilize where we have just a single program.cs as opposed to having a startup.cs and program.cs. Things get kind of consolidated here. And if we wanna add a health check, it's actually just a two line, two line change for us here to add a very simple health check. So what we wanna do is just before we build the app, let's call on our builder here and call services and we're gonna add health checks. Okay, so that's really all we need to do to add health checks, but let's map them to a specific endpoint. Let's call app.mapHealthChecks and we're gonna map this to forward slash health. Okay, that is literally all we have to do to set up a basic health check. Now, since we have a change to our code, we need to rebuild our image for this and we can check it by restarting our container. So let's head back to the terminal. All right, let's see if our container is still running and it is, let's go ahead and stop it. So we'll say Docker container stop 665. And now if we refresh our page here, um, by the way, 665 was just coming from the container ID. So you can use just the first few, sort of the prefix of this if, you, if you'd like to stop it. If we refresh now, basically there's nothing running on port 5000 anymore. And so this is just going to time out or uh, be unable to connect. So since we made a change to our code, all we really need to do is to run our Docker build command again. So let's go ahead and run it again and we'll tag it with latest. Okay, so now let's run our image again. All right, so things are running. Let's refresh the page. We can see that looks good. And if we wanna hit our health check endpoint, it's just going to be forward slash health. And we can see we get a healthy response here. So this will be a nice convenience and we'll look at how we can use this when we're load balancing different services or orchestrating services with various orchestration tools in other videos on productive dev. Okay, so that's about all there is to doing a very basic containerization of a .NET 6 web API. Thanks for watching, and if you got anything out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed, and if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll see you next time.